Welcome back everyone. In this second video on magnetism, we're going to be looking at magnetic flux and also Gauss's law of magnetism. So we're going to start by reviewing electric flux. So remember in our unit on chapters 21 and 22 on electric uh, energy and fields, etc., we talked about the concept of flux, which is essentially the dot product of the electric field with the area vector. Or in other words, how much of the electric field is going through this area. And we defined uh, an area vector A that was perpendicular to this. Well, we have a similar calculation for magnetic flux. And so magnetic flux is simply the dot product of the magnetic field dotted with the area. So it's BA cosine theta. So B is the magnetic field strength in Tesla's. So if it's in Gauss, you have to convert it. A is the area in square meters. And phi B is the magnetic flux in Weber's. Shorthand for a Weber is a WB. So that's Tesla times meter squared. Now, it turns out that magnetic flux actually leads us to Gauss's law of magnetic flux. And we already studied Gauss's law of electric flux. Okay, so Gauss's law of magnetic flux is Maxwell's second equation. Well, what was the first Maxwell equation? The first was Gauss's law of electric flux, which, if you remember, was that the surface integral of E dot dA is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. There's a very similar expression for magnetic flux, and it looks something like this. The surface integral of B dot dA is equal to rho magnetic. Now, what is this rho magnetic? Well, rho magnetic is something that we're going to call the magnetic monopole density. Okay, so what's a monopole? Well, we don't really know. It's a theoretical object, and no one's ever really observed a monopole. So what we're talking about is with a charge, you can have a positive charge by itself, and that causes a field to go outwards. And you can have a negative charge by itself with a field going inwards. But nobody has ever seen a North Pole just sitting by itself. As far as we know, all North Poles are also connected to South Poles. Even the electron, which has its spin, as it were, has a dipole for its magnetic moment. It's got a North and a South, depending on whether it's spinning one way or the other. So as far as we know, magnetic monopoles don't exist. And that was actually uh, one thing that uh, in cosmology, um, something called inflation theory actually solved. So one thing that's interesting about magnetic field lines is that unlike electric field lines, they don't diverge. So if I have a positive charge, the field lines sort of spread out. They diverge. Mathematically, they are passing through a surface and they don't come back in. But magnetic field lines tend to circulate. And as a reminder of this, think back to when we drew our magnetic fields of a bar magnet. Remember how they sort of came out of the North Pole and they went into the South Pole? There was some sort of circulation and they even went through the magnet inside all of those domains that we talked about. So there's a sort of circulation for magnetic field lines. And in math terms, what this means is that magnetic fields have curl, but not divergence. And so really what happens is that the density of magnetic monopoles is really zero. So Gauss's law of magnetism is this. 
that on a closed surface, the integral of b dot dA is zero. And just to convince you of this, take a look at my magnet up here, my bar magnet with a north and a south. Can you draw any closed surface where you have a magnetic field line going into it that doesn't come out? And you can't. Anytime you draw any sort of closed surface, you have a field line entering and a field line exiting. There's no source of magnetic field within that Gaussian surface. That's a closed surface, uh, so a surface integral. Okay, we're not talking about a loop, but like a three-dimensional object. Okay, even if I take the whole thing, well, okay, I have enclosed some magnetic field lines within this, but I have an equal amount of north and south field lines, so my density of magnetic monopoles is really zero. I have an equal number of north and south. So this is really Gauss's law of magnetism, that the integral through a closed surface of b dot dA is zero. Now in the big scheme of things, this is very important. It's the second of Maxwell's equations, and it tells us a lot about how magnetic fields behave. But we're really not going to be using magnetic flux through a closed surface very much. We're going to get to it, but we will be talking about magnetic flux through an open surface, both later on in this unit and also when the magnetic flux is changing, we'll talk about it in our next unit. And so the takeaway here is that magnetic fields curl, but they don't diverge. Okay, so next time we're going to be talking about magnetic forces on wires and torques on a wire loop.